Kruger National Park, it offers a glimpse of what this part of the world looked like before human intervention. It's not only a national asset for South Africa, but also a part of a dwindling global treasure and collective natural heritage of all mankind. We're now at the Kruger National Park. You can see so many elephants crossing the roads here. And over there, there is a car filled with many people. They're now taking pictures of the animals so we can see how it is together with the animals and human beings living in a harmonious way. A group of Chinese and African business and policy leaders have been here to take a closer look at what they can do to protect wildlife. Chinese film star Wang Baoqiang has also joined efforts and says the Chinese support for curbing trade in ivory could bolster conservation. My trip this time to Kruger National Park is to let more people know that it's important to protect elephants and rhinos. I want to tell people that we should work together to stop the demand for wildlife products such as tusks and horns, to let them know the trade in ivory is illegal. This is my uh, vehicle that I'm using to do game drives. And for locals like Elof, who was born and works in Kruger, wildlife has a cultural value and a contribution to Africans' tourism growth. And that environment will directly support their livelihood. To spend so much time with uh, the animals because they'd love us to keep the animals safe and protected. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I keep everything safe and protected this vehicle, look after it as, as my first priority, as, as the vehicle that is providing, putting a bread on the table. Um, well, next but says Chinese contributions to the governors and environmental conservation is crucial. The conservation community is looking at the current poaching crisis and we see sort of three layers, three levels of intervention. One is protection on the ground, we call it stop the killing. The second one is about the trade and shipment of wildlife products. Um, we call it stop the trafficking. And then the top level is to reduce the demand. And I think it's important to say we see a role for China in assisting Africa at all three of those levels, not just on the demand, but even with technology and funding and manpower and experience on the ground. Since the 1970s, over half of Africa's elephants have been lost, rhino population devastated and other big game endangered. Through the summit, both African representatives and Chinese policymakers said they will raise wildlife protection as an issue that is of much a priority to both leaders as bilateral trade, investment, etc. within the forum's agenda. Su Yuting, CCTV at the Kruger National Park, South Africa.